You are a master at uh, 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 technical difficulties. No, uh, no, un- unraveling technical g- difficulties, I should say. That was challenging. That was really impressive. We were in a panic. There was only one channel working. We could only hear out of one ear. The music was only going on one side, yeah. whatever it's called. Is that called mono or something? Yeah, that's it. In the music world? Mono. And Christina unplugged and replugged like 17 different plugs here in the space of 30 seconds jiggled every single button in this entire room and somehow at the last second she saved the day and got us back on yeah track. i did and it's Pretty this amazing. little guy right here this is the culprit that's the one that always makes me not be able to hear yeah it's <clears> the <throat> console it's the console dial that says headphone that's the one that's the bad boy yeah, go figure yeah wow Welcome to 11th Hour Radio, people, here on Royalton Community Radio. We come to you live every Friday at 11 a.m. And we have been doing this. Christina. Yes. This, I don't know if this is the day. Probably not, because the days never match up really like this. But May, the month of May is our five-year anniversary of having this show. Wow. And I just saw on my Facebook memories page the very first day go by. So it wasn't. it wasn't on this day obviously really but, uh-huh that's just i can't believe so we're it. heading into our sixth year that how, 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 are, how are we even living this long i don't I, even know i don't know and how could you do something every week for that length I of time know. and just still be and we've literally it. only skipped maybe a half dozen times in in those years yeah i never did something weather or sickness or travel yeah and all Anytime I've had a band, it's broken up after, you know, I haven't had a band for more than <laughs> Woo, three years. Woo, Christina, we are the band that will never break up. Yeah. Like, like, what's a band that's never broken up? The, the I was going to say the Beatles. No. Uh, Cros- Where are they Crosby, now? Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Ah, uh, no. Uh, d- d- Loggins and Messina. I don't know who that is, so I can't. <laughs> um, I know that name. Pink Flamingos. Never. Now I'm making you're up ma- stuff. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think but you're making these up now. That's because I, I don't know anything about <laughs> music. It's too bad we didn't start a band earlier. Maybe maybe we would have broken we up still if we started time. a band. We That's time. true. We have time. But that would jinx us if we maybe, actually maybe. had a band. It would have right. to break up because they d- always do. Right. Unless you're the unless you're like the headliner and you can fire everybody and just hire a right. new... Right. Do two people just count as a band? Because maybe we... It's, a, it's called a duo. Oh. Well, duos don't break up so much. They're not bands. Yeah, duo. Oh. Sometimes they, if they're married, sometimes they get divorced. Right, right. But we're not married, so it's fine. I have my work. Yeah. All right. Okay. We have we have <laughs> big big things to accomplish in this life, and yep. it's never too late. And that's today's message. That well, we have a lot of messages for today. 
We do? Yeah. Oh, I have the most important message for today, though. Okay. You people, if anybody's feeling even the very slightest bit grumpy about anything, which I don't know how you can right now because it, it is a little chilly, but it's so beautiful out and it's finally getting lovely and, and the sky's blue and the sun is shining and the grass is growing and it smells nice. Yeah. Anyway, if you have any issues or any problems at all, mm-hmm. I suggest, and this company doesn't sponsor us, so it's totally fine that I promote them you get your little tush down to welch's hardware because they have a whole tank of you're not even going to believe me when i say this well they have button quail and you know i know a normal little chick is pretty cute button quails are like this big i'm making i'm making a, i'm showing christina so like imagine quarter, if you were size of yeah, a quarter if you were a barbie doll and you got a little chick that's like the size did you a chicken did you get some no i really really wanted to but but you know, I'll get you some. I I, to, what am I going to do with them? I have to go They're there. so tiny. They're so tiny. You wouldn't even believe how tiny they are. I, I just have never seen anything that made me so happy as looking at all these tiny, tiny little button quail running around in their tank. Wow. So I, I just, well, it's an overwhelming feeling. It's just, it's just so s- synchronous that I'm heading there after the show because I have my pruners, my Felco pruners. Oh, that you have to get sharpened, I bet. Well, no, that's not it because I sharpen my pruners, but I haven't changed the blade oh. in like 10 years. And so I ordered a new blade from Leonard's and I got it and then I couldn't put it on. And huh. you know, it's one of those situations where you try, you get out your pliers and all the tools that you think are appropriate and then you end up hurting yourself like gouging yeah, yourself you with slip a tool and jab your palm. yes which i'll show you this one see that one? Oh, yep yeah i yep. did that trying to get the <laughs> get the blade off so i says i suddenly realized i could just take it to welch's because those yeah, guys they probably do, have a they can do anything they yeah, do stuff yeah. like if you have stuff that you think just can't be fixed take it on down there welch's should sponsor us they should that would be better than the grilled cheese place <laughs> <laughs> Shh, they're gonna stop sponsoring. No, I didn't say the name. I know. Nobody li- knows. It's a really small town. There's only like a couple. Um, um, but okay, I got to tell you though, if you if you go in there, the button quail are not with the regular chicks, so you might miss them altogether. You walk in the door and turn directly to your right and head over toward. It's where the sunflower the garden, seeds. Yep, garden section, and they're sort of isolated there. If they didn't completely sell out yesterday, because. Honestly, I wanted to like scoop them all into my pockets and just run off with them as I'm fast surprised as possible. you didn't. I, I begged John for the entire duration that we were in the store, like a small child. I begged him for the button quail, but and I and I and I used and I used my little I used our little boy Ira as I said Ira would love these. Oh my, because he does. Huh. He loves things like that. Yeah. But, but if his grades are well, he's supposed to be getting a bunny soon. And John said we are not getting a bunny and, and button, quail button quail to add to our menagerie. I so. hear you. I'm with John. They're just so cute and tiny. It's just, I, they're so tiny. John says I have an just, obsession with, with miniature things, but I also have an obsession with overly large things. Like, I don't really care for things well, that like are normal elephants? size. Yes. You like those? Yes. And I like dogs that are just giant. Oh, I saw one in Facebook. Oh, you did? Yeah, I saw it sitting in a car. And I actually had to comment. I said, now there's a dog. <laughs> it was It was bigger than the person. See, but I don't really like tiny dogs. They don't, they don't. No, really we're talking about big dogs. No, that... I know, I know. I'm just saying that sometimes my obsession with miniature things oh. doesn't extend to. It has to be cute because small dogs are not so cute. No, they're not. I don't know but why. Big that's dogs are should wicked be. cute. Yeah, that's hmm. a reverse inverse relation. There's some mathematical yeah. property there that's complex. I like miniature or baby doll versions of everything. Like I think that I love it when people monkey around with with genetics and they make. Ew. They, I know. I know. I know. See, I don't really like that, but I, but when you can kind of come up with like miniature cows that can live in your house, that's just great. It's not. I know it's not great. In my heart, I know it's not great to make miniature <laughs> cows that can live in your house. But holy crap, I just want those cows. Yeah, if we could have like another life to live where stuff was wrong, but it was good. Yeah. Ugh. I know. I would God. go there. We could go there when we we're feeling bad. Yeah. We'd just like hop over to the parallel universe and have That's our just, little like I just have an issue where cows. I am obsessed with abnormally sized things. I yeah. like things to be extra, extra smaller, I, extra, extra I large. Kinda, I kind of get that. I still have a dollhouse that I made. I, me too. I dust it sometimes. I love, I love Actually, dollhouse I just things. advice for people who have dollhouses that don't get a lot of use. 
Uh, you should take all the stuff out of it and put it in plastic containers or something so it doesn't get dusty and just take care of the house itself, the shell, because that's easier to take care of. And then cats won't get in and sort of knock yeah. everything down. Cats, cats do and love to Because like, the they will start to play with the tiny plates and the tiny teacups mm-hmm. and you'll lose them. Even the tiny Coke bottles, yep. especially. I have all these things. I know yeah, exactly they, what you're saying. And those are special. They are. You don't want to have to go buying <laughs> buying the tiny Coke bottles twice. No. no. So just save your stuff. Be care- and when the kids come, just take everything out. It's fun for the kids to take the stuff out. Yeah, it's out more fun to set up the dollhouse in. and arrange the dollhouse than it is to actually be playing with the dollhouse. Yeah. You know? I, mean, I don't know. Do you remember when you were a kid and you were... I, I, didn't, I wasn't really into dolls, but the times that I did play with dolls or Barbies, which I didn't do very often, I didn't, I didn't just play with them. I had to set them up for something, some well, adventure or something. Like that was the that was the whole fun. Yeah, but dollhouse dolls are different than Barbies. Yeah, or of dolls. Course. They're not like dolls. They're no. um, they're little tiny miniature people. They're they're creating a a play and a drama. But I suppose the other dolls are too. I guess dolls are just puppets, basically, for our without holes up their butt. What? Well, some have. You know, puppets have holes up their butt. What? Where are you going to put your hand? Oh, oh, that's not a butt. <laughs> that's just their body torso. It's just their puppet that's orifice. Their No, it's just <laughs> No, it's just where you animate them from. It's from their internal they take out the internal some, organs. Some puppets are less offensive and you just go into their head, you know? Like the kind where you what just What kind of puppet is that? Where you just make their like mouth move like a you know like a crocodile or something. That's, oh, now, I oh I know what you mean. You but you still I mean? have to go up from below into the mouth sometimes. I, I don't know. We should bring our puppets into the show. Okay. I mean, I have a lot. I don't have so many we anymore. Could... I gave a lot away to the little cousins and stuff. What but was you that? have What was that noise? That was my phone. I, oh. I we we have to stay on top. Oh, Paul has He's given us a link. I can't quite tell what it is because it's just, it doesn't indicate, but it's uh, something that says watch and it's something to watch on YouTube. Huh? Maybe it's about puppets. Either about, what would it be about? Button quail. Little Button things. Quail. Big things. Dollhouses. We'll, f- we'll find bottles. out. We'll find out later. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I also, well, first of all, I just want to say about the happiness thing, because you were saying how happy you were about the button quail. Yeah. I realized that that green color that is, that we see in the grass right now is called, that is the happiness green. Yeah, it you is. You know, that, you look at that and it just fills you. And, you know, depending on how depressed you are, you might feel it for a second and then kind of push it down. But if you can try to sustain the feeling, like let the green come in for as long as possible until yeah. you get distracted with your life. But it's a nice respite mm-hmm. from the rigors of being part of the human race. I think our brains are psychologically just freaked out when it see when we see the green because I feel like my entire life has been in black and white for, you know, six months of winter. Everything is, you know, there's a few browns thrown in there, but mostly it's it's pretty mm. monochromatic. And our brain yeah. just can't even believe it when we see color again. Right. So oh, it's it's guys. extra happy. Yeah. Yeah, it makes Isn't me... that lava lamp on? It looks weird today. It's got like a big claw. It looks like somebody was using it. It's in a different position inside, like the lava is in a different position than it was last week. Yeah. So I think somebody used it, then it must... It, it, let me check. Is it hot? No, it's off. Oh, God. I remember that day, the one day that you and I decided that we were going to turn on that lava lamp, and yeah. we were really disappointed in it because nothing... Maybe we did this twice. I can't remember. Has nothing really happened through the entire we hour? We did it for months. We turned it on for months? Well, we tried to get it going for months. We would plug it in, and it just wouldn't respond. I just remember and we the thought we time. thought something was wrong with us, right? Right, like it didn't like us. Yeah, but, but I just remember the time where I woke up at midnight realizing that we'd left the lava lamp plugged in, and I had a panic attack because oh. that lava lamp doesn't do diddly squat, but it gets wicked hot. Except that people do have parties and they leave their, they must like go like pass out drunk and the lava lamp is still on. So I think they're probably built in some kind of safety mechanism, despite the, the slight I don't know. I don't trust that you it. feel. I don't trust that thing. What, look what at I don't, it. Just look what at I don't, it. What I don't think is that lava lamps that aren't on are really unattractive. Like I saw one in my closet yesterday. I was cleaning. Cause you I got, own a lava lamp? Yeah, we have a lava lamp. Lava lamp. Does it 
Does it behave like this one? Kind of, yeah. Looks very similar. Jeez, I'm... What? Uh, but I was... What is the draw to these things? I don't know. We've spent a lot of time contemplating I the know, I know. I mean, we've contemplated it on. We've contemplated it off. We've contemplated it at midnight, waking us up out of a deep <laughs> slumber. I don't know what it is with that thing. But it's kind of like plastic. I was thinking about plastic driving down here. I was thinking how there's certain things that just shouldn't be plastic. Right. You know, like, like I feel, I feel very strongly that Adirondack chairs should <gasps> not be plastic. Oh my God, me too. I just was yeah. staring at the law school's ones, trying to decide if they were really wood, if they were classy enough to do that, or if they were that composite. So I have something to admit here. I, I refuse. I refuse all plastic lawn furniture completely. I don't. But I can, I can hear blows the, over. I can feel the butt. No, no, coming. it's only a little butt. So, <laughs> so the, the when I was at Welch's looking at the the button quail, what have you just done? She just burnt her throat. She just gulped her hot that, tea and that, burnt that that insulated mug is too good. They shouldn't make them that good. <laughs> Should have a warning on it. Because Contents they, are hot. You know, you maybe pour, you if you made the, them hot, they're two, hot. Two hours ago. Anyway, sorry to interrupt no, you. Something fine. about lawn chairs. So so I go to Welch's and they have, you know, their huge selection of plastic lawn chairs, which I completely ignore because I find them disgusting. Sorry, Welch's. I love your button quail. Don't love your lawn chairs. Okay. Um, but then, then I see what appears to be a wooden Adirondack chair sitting it, there. It's the grain. They, it's they the, impress it's, the No, grain. it's the kind that's mixed. It's like a composite Ew. mixed wood and plastic. No, no, but you don't understand. So we have this wedding business, and I, I'm buying so many Adirondack chairs, and oh. they're kind of expensive. And then I have to paint them, ah. and then the paint flecks off, and I have to repaint them I and see. keep everything looking really classy. I get so it. I saw this thing, and I said, you know what? Oh, I get it. Yeah. It kind of, it really does look like wood, and it's heavy. It's not going to blow I over. Know. So I decided okay. that I would get a couple, but they were in this really poop brown color mm-hmm. and i went and i found charlie and i said charlie these come in white and he said no we got that's why they're so cheap we got a wicked deal on them because they're just in this poop brown color he didn't say poop brown i said poop brown um so he said but we have this white spray paint that bonds to that stuff so i said okay and i went and i got them and i got the white spray paint and i brought what, them home what a great project for you and i spent <laughs> spray paint plastic chairs <laughs> it was i horrible. that was fun at my I have, like, my knuckle has, like, Carpal's Tunnel in it now from pushing the spray paint bottle so long. Yeah. And I'm not even done. I did one chair and, like, one arm of the other chair. I, this is America. And now I have to go home and finish it because this is America. they really do look just like wood if they're spray painted especially. All but. right. Well, let me tell you some other things that I think should not be plastic. What? Okay. I think that plastic mailboxes. Oh, that, I hate those. That, ups- that up- offends me. Me too. Um, I think plastic flowers. Eh, what do you think about that? What? They're not plastic. They're fl- fabric. Where are you finding plastic flowers? They don't even make those anymore. Those are from the 60s. Really? Yeah. What about wax okay, flowers? Okay, I'm just behind. It's okay. It's Okay, here's one that's going to be controversial. Okay. And I'm not sure which side you're going to fall on, but I say... I generally don't like plastic, so... Look, I just say... I say no to laundry okay. baskets that are plastic. Oh, yeah. We don't use laundry baskets, but we do use those plastic tub trugs they're called i use the trugs yeah but the those laundry- are more for like dirt and stuff but that i also still use them for yeah laundry. if you feel upset like if you have somehow inherited a plastic laundry basket and you when you look at it you just get a slightly disquieting feeling inside but you put you're willing to put up with that because it's so practical I but if this goes on, practical. here's the thing. I Yeah, that's a whole different story. But if that goes on for years and you still look at that laundry basket and get that kind of icky feeling, just get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm we talking We have maybe from one in our house and what I use it for is storing um, flip-flops in the attic. Okay, I like think that's... Like summer shoes, as as sandals. You don't, you don't have to look at it. Yeah, I don't really look at it. I think that's it. okay. But the but, tub trucks are everywhere in our house. Okay, I have to look at them every minute. Well, then people are going to say, what's the alternative? And I'm going to just say, go to Basketville and get yourself a nice basket. Well, we just use... We have a hamper and then we just pull everything out and throw it in a tub truck and bring it to the laundry. Yeah. Okay, but there are some things that really should be plastic, like toothbrushes. Yeah. Right. What else could a yeah, toothbrush be? I had be? a wooden toothbrush. You did once, what? and it got all like black mold on it Ew. immediately. Okay. Here's the thing: Does everyone keep their toothbrush in a cup the way that I do? Because if no. you do, you know, when you take your toothbrush and you 
do the final rinse and throw it in the cup. There was water in your toothbrush bristles and it just runs down the handle and it pools up in the cup. And then, and then your toothbrush handle is sitting in like over time, like a quarter inch of like stanky old water. Yeah, I would have been on top of that. Right. I just yeah. don't really I notice. Mine's in a makeup bag. So you keep just it like in case flat. I have to escape late at night, like if they mm. if they come for me, right? I can just grab the makeup That's bag. Smart, I guess. And it, has, it doesn't have makeup in it. It has toothpaste, um, dental floss, the necessities, a few things like a hair clip, maybe. You um, never you never wear hair clips. It's because I I'm too cheap to actually buy one. I had one. How, no, I must, don't. Oh oh, you must pull it back when you're gardening, though. I wear a baseball cap. But I see, don't. I don't pull my hair back very much. I but just like, I can't. I like to hide. I can't. It. I was wearing a baseball cap like all week while we did outdoor work, and most of the time I had to pull my hair back anyway because anytime I sort of bent over, my hair would all blow in front of my face, and I couldn't see what I was doing. Yeah, that's and bad. that made me really angry. I get that. I know it's irritating. It's like bugs, it's like insects. But one last thing, there is one thing that I feel can go either way, okay. plastic or not plastic, and I think equally equal validity to either both. Cows. Right? Um, Do you know what I mean? No. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you know what I mean. plastic cows are good. Plastic cows are great to play with. What other... What other as, they sell, as opposed they sell to the flesh and bone cows? Well, I like the real cows and I like the plastic cows. I like both equally. Okay. That's all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, my kids have lots of little tiny plastic animals. Yeah, I couldn't live without plastic animals, like right. small miniature right. animals. Those I, are, I hear those you there. somehow are an important innovation after the uh, armored knights and horses of yep. yore. Of yeah. our, you, you know, we used to have metal yeah. knights. No, my kids have them. They have all the little Well, because you have all the old stuff, because John probably saved every no, old yeah, but, toy Yeah, but Ira collects had. those, the little metal Britons. And yeah. Britons are the only one that doesn't have um, like lead or bad stuff in it, too. Oh, you're so smart. Okay, time for a song. Okay. What will it be? It's going to be uh, Both Air. Okay. From an album that we did together call, uh, called Shooting Arrows at the Moon. And here is the song uh, Tango Rose. <laughs> It was something to see down in South Colorado Once the dawn all left, she said don't follow He was down on his knees in the town of Durango it Was a billy all banged up and never been solo It was his last chance, he was out on furlough he was writing the sermon at his own funeral Chicken scratches, scrolled in prose On a cocktail napkin from a tango rose Well, a life burned out at 65-4 A half a mile shy of the Utah border When she asked how long would it take to get parts He said a couple of weeks I could sell her out of love Then the sun rolled over to Dust Bowl Town And it heated the streets before it went down came on and they opened the doors and the sign overhead flashed the tango rose Tequila, the scene of the crime 
in a fight broke out and before it was through I lay Billy all banged up in Sedona Sioux It was the last chance and the sun never rose As blood still drips from a tip of a thorn And to this day nobody knows the tango rose What really happened at the tango rose What really happened at the tango rose Tango rose, the tango rose continuing to write incredible songs yeah all right well there's so much to talk about you did you want to talk about the the podcaster meeting that i went to yes, last please. night i didn't get to go to it and tell me all about it please um well they had a panel of people talking about podcasting and frankly i mean they were great and i liked what they said and we could have been in the in the panel i mean we know a lot about podcasting you do in fact well uh some of the things that were talked about people were not really up to date on stuff oh did you so i did you feel all cocky like hey hey, i know how that well i was kind of i was kind of tempted to grab the microphone there was a microphone that was available for the audience which was partly made up of podcasters and partly made up of people wanting to podcast wanting to get into podcasting um and this was at vpr studios that's what Mm -hmm. i don't know if i'm we said that um so so there was a mic available for people in the audience i just didn't feel quite up to trying to you know, present a whole thing about the things right. that I knew. I just right. figured there was a lot of socializing time before and after the panel. So I thought, you know, I could share some information. Here comes the train. We should all pause and take a minute of yeah. moment of silence for the train. It sounds big today. It sounds bigger. It does. I mean, not like there's more cars. It just sounds like the train itself is actually humongous. Maybe it's that thing about big things and small things that we're talking about. Mm. Like sometimes if it's, if Alice in Wonderland is, um, you know, if we're kind of plugged into that paradigm, then things can get bigger or smaller at whim. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, what were we saying? Oh, podcast. Podcast event. You, uh, have, uh, You know a ton about podcasts because you're the one who manages all our podcast stuff and you've, you've like, delved into every angle that you can for our podcast because yeah. you've been really good about that. I have. You could have run that whole panel. I know I could have. But I'm just a little too shy. Yeah. And that's really why you didn't go to the microphone too. Yeah. It was fine. I met uh Erica Heilman who does Oh yeah. Does Rumble Strip yep. and she uh she ran up to me well didn't run up to me, but we saw each other and she said We've been Facebook friends for years, and I've never <laughs> met you in person. I love it so when that So that happens, was cool. Actually. That's yeah. always great to meet people after years of being so-called friends. Yeah. Yep. Um, she was she was very cool. She's very funny. You would like her in I person. Love funny. I love yeah. funny people. She used to be a private detective. Really? Yeah. And she That's gotta it, be it was funny. cool because she said how um, when she was a private detective, it it fulfilled maybe half of her longings to be involved with other people's stories because as a private detective you right. go and you get to ask people very personal questions yeah. but the uh, but that's how she ended up starting a podcast because she wanted to go deeper into people's stories and that's what she does now on rumble strip cool. yeah yeah and she just started in her closet you know people think I don't know, some people might think podcasting is some elaborate thing but actually you can just you got a tape recorder that's about all you need to start and closet. just do That's it. Funny. Yeah, she started in the closet, so. And now she's out. Now she's out. <laughs> yeah, and we started here in a little closet. We used to be in a closet over at Bale. It used to it be. It was really small. It was Our a small space. Was pretty tiny. Yeah, That's but it was, it was enough. We just needed enough room mm-hmm. to 
whatever. Open our big old mouth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't take much room for ha- to have a mouth right. piece or a mouth area. <laughs> I don't know, what am I talking about? That's my brain. I stayed up too late last night. So then I went from the podcaster meeting to the James Ellers uh, fundraiser. At Holy cl- at cow, you club. were busy. Well, this is That looked good, too. We were, yeah, that was a club. We were totally strapped this week. Mm-hmm. Not going anywhere. Yeah, I would have taken you, but I knew no. that you had stuff to do. Well, we have a wedding so. coming up next weekend in our house. Everything is still just a disaster because it just... We're two weeks behind every place down here in the valley. So we're just raking up all the... Nasty yeah, but it's winter. starting to look nice, isn't it? Is it is starting to look you nice. You see, it was you yeah. had that panic. You thought, oh, we're not know, it's gonna I look know. like um you know. Yeah, yeah. I want the apple blossoms to come out though for this first wedding. That would be cool. I've been trying to bribe them every day and the leaves are just barely coming, so I kinda doubt mm. it. It's but so beautiful. Even the buds, the buds are beautiful too. So they are. I they think kind they, of look like they're blossoms. Yeah, there's just so much color popping out of the hills mm-hmm. that I you know, you just I, had to take, I? I was I washed we have the big big white curtains that hang from our barn doors and I really stupidly and lazily didn't take them down last fall. Uh-oh. I figured who cares? I'll shut the door, everything will be fine. I, uh. I didn't plan on the renegade pigeon that snuck in and lived in our barn all winter. So one of the curtains just was disgusting and so I had to go online and try to Google how to get pigeon poop out of fabric well wow. not very helpful what'd you come up with um dish soap hydrogen peroxide some other things but these curtains are huge huge yeah so i had to, to wash to them a... in a giant horse tank and then they're too tall and long to hang on any regular thing so i had to make new enormous laundry lines hanging from the trees and dry these and now they're all back up and they look lovely but i'm i'm if that pigeon gets ever back in my barn again i'm you're going to call your dad. Yeah. He's going to get his 12 gauge out there. <laughs> no, I don't want to call my dad again because last time my dad tried to shoot a pigeon in the barn, he shot a hole through the roof and now it leaks rain. Oh. So I will let my 13 year old son do it because he's actually, he's thoughtful, had some better luck and didn't, and didn't actually shoot a hole in the, in the roof. But anyway. Fantastic. It's, it's a family affair. Yeah. I had to use the phone this morning. It was really weird you had to use the phone a couple times for what well first i had to i had to call the school and just let them know what my kids pickup plans were because today's a half day of school and we're still here at noon because yes we, so i had to make i had to send aunt jen to get the kids and, and you have to always tell the school who's going to get them and then and then i had to call the herald office and do along because i'm the new fire department secretary so i had to like tell the herald all these things for their ad for the chicken barbecue for memorial day yeah parade. And it was, it was just, I felt, I felt very business-like this morning. I don't like to make phone calls, but these phone calls were very you professional came, oriented. You, so I was able to do it. You walked in here looking really efficient today. <laughs> I have to say, I was impressed. I was a little embarrassed though, because I was on the phone with the advertising lady from the newspaper and I, and you know, I'm totally distractible all the time. So I'm talking about the prices of the chicken meals to her and what to put on our ad. And all of a sudden... I scream, John, the sheep are out, like while I'm on the phone, because all the little lambs went trotting by the window while I was on the phone. Oh, wow. John had left a gate open, and they all were like parading up the driveway. It's not a big deal. They're not going to go anywhere, but. You have one of the best driveways in Vermont. We we do. I am really vain about our driveway. It's gorgeous. People come and use it for photographs. When you're coming up to your house is such a grandiose experience. It, it makes you feel like you're big, entering like 150 year old maples just line it, but they're start they're dying, they're dying. Well, don't worry, you're gonna you're probably gonna die first. I know, so don't worry. I mean, you could worry about that, just that we're gonna die. I do, I do worry about that, but you know, like how much do you worry about it? A lot, really, kind of. Let's talk about death. I mean, not directly. Let's talk about it sort of sideways because it is a personal growth topic. Okay. Um. Yeah, so what did I want to say about death? I wanted to say that death is only, it only exists because of life. And so the great part of this is that we have friends. Totally not following you, but okay. Continue. Maybe you're gonna I make sense in a minute. I was trying to get, I, you know, I just trying to get my foot out of my mouth because I didn't really want to talk about death because well, I want to talk about life. But if you can't talk about one without the other, it's a big mess. It's what do you big, hope? Like, what do you hope gets you? Best yeah. case scenario, what thing do you want to get you in the end? Um, just the regular. 
<laughs> the regular? <laughs> I'll have I'll have the regular, please. <laughs> no, because the regular now is not fun. You know, it's usually I'm cancer, just, and I'm that just, is no, that doesn't seem here's, nice. Rather than focus on that, I want I a heart I, attack. Okay, I don't care. You don't care? No, I just want my friends to be like so so close to me. All right, but. And I love my friends. Uh, well, we love you and too, I, but you still probably don't want to die of cancer because it seems pretty bad, doesn't it? But why Why even pose it that way? Like, we don't need to talk about it. Would you like this? Would you like that? Because you just... No, hap- you don't get a choice it, anyway. It just happens the way it happens and you do the best with it. It's like with anything in life. You just do the best you can. And I just don't want to... I don't want to linger. But here's the thing is that... What happens if you linger is that you just have to dig deeper into the wellspring of your spirit. That's all it's about. And believe me, after you die, you're like, wow, that was kind of tough, but here we are. This is cool now. So I, I know. Would, Actually, I, don't... I think the people that do linger sometimes are maybe happier because maybe when they have that time to realize they're dying, then they're, then they're actually enjoying their life more. Is that true? I think it's true. There's a country song about it. It must be true. Yeah. Live well, here like you were dying. You know, there's there is death, and there's also living with a lot of pain. And I don't yeah, mean see, fa- I'm more scared of pain than I am of death. I guess well, here's I I had a little advice for people who are feeling shattered and undermined by invisible forces. It's just because I'm a coward, actually. It's okay. There are strategies for dealing with this. And that's what being human is all about. It's about developing strategies for coping with an impossible situation. And so here's a really interesting strategy, which I call SAFE. S-A-F-E. Did I spell that right? Safe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did you make this up? Sorry, this like a spit. Yeah, I made this up. But wow, I wanted and you to gave it like a... I did. I just, it came to me in a big flood of, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what it was. Are you going to but... patent this? There's, I think there's something else I'm called gonna, safe already. So just, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put it out. All right, you do that. And we're going to see how people do with it. See if it actually helps people. Okay. So here it is. S stands for sanity. And so utilizing this property, you, you remind yourself that you are indeed sane. Now that may sound simple, but it is no, not. No, it's not. That's, that's not even when you're totally healthy. How many times a day do you healthy? feel like you're crazy? Yeah, a lot. Either somebody's telling you you're crazy or, right. you're, or you're getting down on yourself. So just stop and say, I am sane. I'm just getting to the point where I trust my own sanity because for most of my adult life, I was told that I was crazy and I was convinced that I was crazy. Yeah. So so this is, I finally realized that, I, that I'm, I'm not, wasn't, wasn't crazy. So you're wasn't already the practicing the S in yeah. safe. Yeah. That's fantastic. So you are sane and practice reminding yourself that because it's the truth. The world is insane, but you are sane. Okay, A stands for authority. You are in charge of your life. That's another one. We got to remember. Yeah, I'm not good. I'm not good at that one at all. Well, you got a little practicing to do. Mm -hmm. You are sane, but you're not in authority. But you can work on it. Okay. Okay, F, fluidity. We move through our life with fluidity. That feeling... That you're moving like a, like a, what's that cheetah? Like a cheetah? What's that <laughs> cheetah? Like a cheetah? <laughs> I don't know. That's che- uh, came to my mind. A cheetah. That's okay, a, let's move on to. That's the fastest animal. That's the fastest animal on the face of the earth, I think. Okay, I'm going to move on to. Or a peregrine to... falcon. Okay, what? Okay, I didn't really e? want to talk about it. Fine, animals. good, good. Go. E, eloquence. We, we communicate with eloquence. Oh, I thought you were going to say elephant. It would have been better well, to go be... with the cheetah. Sorry. Sorry. It's not about animals. <laughs> but I love animals. I do too. I'm not talking about animals now. I'm a, the biggest animal lover. I was the one who went no, the animal I hospital. I love, I, I love animals I the had, most. <laughs> I had an animal hospital. And I had an animal cemetery. I have one too. You did not. Everybody when you were, does. When Everybody you were six, an animal cemetery. Not when you were six. I had to bury my cat somewhere, didn't I? No, I would find mange ridden squirrels <laughs> and I would put them in shoe boxes and bury them out in the woods and my oh. mother did not know about this. Wow. I had I had a big white quartz rock that was like my prized possession and that was the headstone for, for the various dead things. That's nice. Yeah. That was a little more sophisticated. I just used like flat rocks and upper up New York upper New York State we don't have quartz. Yeah. We have shale. And schist. Yeah. Okay. You're on your eloquence part. Sorry. I will stop interrupting with... No, I'm done. That's it. All right. 
Do you want to reiterate the point just so people... No. Okay. <laughs> I've made too much fun of you now. You're going onward. <laughs> These are just saying, you know, I'm telling you, it's important to have it's some strategies. It's kind of terrible when you're trying to be serious but, and I make fun of you. I'm really sorry. I'm just... It, it's important to have a sense of humor in life. And also, it's important that our strategies <laughs> are incredibly simple. We don't want things that are hard to do. So yeah. it, it involves a whole lot of words like don't go there. Right. I mean, or just... Or, you know, if you like to... S- like drink in a lot of words that's fine but then go take a walk yeah and just remember one thing that you read just one thing okay remember your coffee's hot i know i'm gonna, take, I'm gonna take a tea. swig okay oh gosh it's time for another song can what? you believe it we just barely played a I song know. are you it's, sure we're in time warp what it's because jupiter is retrograde in no. scorpio still <laughs> yes it is so time is kind of going backwards <laughs> in certain ways yeah you can feel it. I don't know how you keep track of this stuff. Oh, it's do you important. have an app? Do you have an app to tell you all these things? Like, how do you know these yeah, things? Yeah, I do every have day? an app, actually. You have an app? I haven't used it yet, but Julie showed me this app. Um, Julie. It's great. It's beautiful. Plus, it's like the presentation Stop is beautiful. Stop enabling her. aesthetics. <laughs> no, but you'll fall in love with the aesthetics of the app. So you'll enjoy seeing what's going on astrologically with your friends on any given day. There's... I'll tell you later some incredible well, don't put, synchronicity. Don't put any more apps on my phone. Remember how my phone crashed that time that we put an app I on it? I didn't put at I put apps on your no, phone. No, actually no, never mind. It wasn't my it wasn't my phone. It was my computer when we tried to add something. I don't remember what. Okay. Okay. What are you going to play? Uh, I'm going to play Cousins Project. Oh good. Which one? Uh Back Way to Victory. Oh yeah. And here's good. the thing is I got I've got people have given me a lot of new music lately, but I can't seem to get it onto my iPad. So I just apologize, people. Be patient with me. I'm going to get the new music organized, and I'm going to get it. Get some new music on here. In the meantime, you're going to have to listen to things. Do you like know how this. to move music from thing to thing? Uh, I had I had my system I, I had my system down, and then all of a sudden things became incompatible again and stopped talking to each other. It's always incompatible. I I, I have know. to move it's like you have to all my music onto an iPod, PiPod, a PiPod or a PiPad. My pod. Papple. The pod one. You should just put a P in front of all the Papple products. It's, it makes it easier to remember. I don't it know does. why. Pod hmm. pad. Anyway, I don't know how to do it. All right. I need help. That's great. Here we go. It's a cold and a wintry day, my love. Have we lost our way? Sun's up, but it's coming down. There's darkness on my mind. Where the road and the tangled rivers rise. No shelter, baby, now. Maybe it's a fatal flaw. Thinking we can see it all. Beyond this valley, beyond this sky. Why do we cry? Why do we care? Oh baby, why? The sugar moon's up, I reckon We could sure use the light On the back way to victory tonight It's a wild land and we've run aground on the shores of paradise Night glows with heaven's fire And a thousand questions Thrown down by sliver of moon And the wind swept Four directions Don't lay down, baby, let's go We gotta trust what we already know And find a path through our creation Why do we care? Oh, baby, why? The sugar moon's up, I reckon We could sure use the light On the back way to victory tonight Go swim 
How simple then to fly And never have a need to feel A lover's warmth or comfort Or walk alone in the fields Reaching out from a broken life But we'll divine us and know the branch And by God while there's still a chance We'll make our run towards salvation Sugar moon's up, I reckon We could sure use the lights On the back way to victory tonight Tremolo. Wow. I've been Those hearing a lot of tremolo lately nice. from the electric guitars in my life. It's pretty cool. Some people know how to time the tremolo perfectly to the track. You know, it has that pulse, and you can change the time. I didn't get to hear it because I was wrestling with my headphones, oh, which I'm sorry. snapped me in the head. <laughs> Ow. It's okay. I'm okay now. But I have heard that song before. I think I do I, know I think have. I do know what you're talking about. I love that album. Yeah, I can't wait to finish another one. But Cousin Steve played a lot on my, my album that's coming out. He oh, was good. He was like half of the electric guitar playing. I think you guys, I, for some reason, it's a very winning duo when you guys play together. Yes, we do have some of the genetics stuff going on. I just, I just some think truth somehow musically, I think you're able to read each other very well. So maybe you don't have to do as much fussing and and fixing of things like yeah or saying no that doesn't work here play it this way i think you i don't know i've never i've never sat in when the two of you were recording yeah, something but i think that's, that's just that's just the feeling i get when i listen to those albums they seem very polished very natural very like we just totally winged this because we're that cool that's kind of how they feel when you listen to wow them. that's neat well They're really good he does he comes up with ideas that are great and he's not attached like he'll He'll send me ideas or he'll come and play some stuff. And then I get to sift through all the ideas that he gave me. And then that's where the, my production uh, skills come in, where I just end up arranging it based on what I think works. And he's usually always happy with that. So we have, cool. yeah, it works out. They just seem very polished. <clears throat> Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks so much. Oh. This is not a good day to get creamies, actually. It just seems kind of cold. A little cold. But they wouldn't melt. I mean, that's the good thing about getting creamies on a cold day. They uh, won't start to drip. Yeah, into your that's lap true. So soon. Yeah, it might. Well, there's so much happiness right now with spring. You don't really need a creamy today. Um, I mean, you, you need a creamy every day, Christina. But okay. I, I have not gotten a creamy every day this week because it's just been really, really busy. But yeah. I got a word for you that you, I want you to define it. Okay. I made it up. That but I think seem you, quite fair. Well, <laughs> but you think I will know? You might have an IK. Okay, here's the word. It's exotrash. <laughs> exotrash. Um Is this your new way to speak of hipsters? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. No. I don't know. I don't I don't Exo know. Exo trash. That's when your ex 
Uh, leaves trash in the yard that you have to dip- dispose of. That's called exo trash. Why are you adding the O to it? Why can't it just be extra? Well, I, I, I thought X trash, but do you think that's better? Extra. It's hard no, to say. No, I mean, the, the O X, is more catchy, but. Well, the X gets caught on the T. X trash. It's a, it's a, it's a palate. It's a problem with the palate. Right. I'm just trying to so. think of a different vowel that might work better. Exotra- exo Exo sounds like, like, like sci- some sort of, some exo. sort of. Exo. Exo Sci-fi trash. or gasoline. I don't know. That all fits. We used gasoline. We had another burn pile this week. Davey helped me with this burn pile. And of course, guys always use gasoline. I do I not. Really do. I, I do not approve of the use of gasoline. I use burn newspaper and matches. Yeah. But I do not use gasoline. But think- by the time I looked out, he had already dumped the gasoline on the fire. Men seem to need that instant gratification. Yeah, I mean, this is, we're being very gender biased when we. I know, when but we talk I, every way, single man I can think of, even the really awesomest ones, always start everything with gasoline. Yeah, what a wait! Gas is expensive, guys. Yeah, not that expensive. Yes, it is. Well, I guess so, but you just I don't know. It's fun. So you, how much would you pay it's for super fun dangerous to have too. some fun? I can think of like three different people that had some sort of really bad gasoline slash fire experience where they burnt half their face or at least, at the very least, their eyebrows are gone. We talked about this. That like throwing sawdust onto a burn pile is a big no-no. It is? Why? Because it actually catches fire. And then blows And up. goes back and starts and burns up to back to you before you've even thrown... Oh. See, that's what gas does, too. If you throw it from a distance, it ignites all the way back to your body. Yeah. But we had a friend who threw, like, a bottle, like a sealed bottle of gasoline onto a fire. And then the neck of the bottle was aimed at him. He didn't realize it. And as as it heated, the thing popped off and it all sprayed back into his face, ignited. That's a bad accident. Yeah. That's part of... I can't remember, but something... Things, it was aimed, something you cylindrical. Just, you that just have to say, like, why does life provide those kinds of bad experiences for us? Well, I, I can't. What's the point of that? I can think of, like, dozens of stories of what where it was a really bad idea, and yet people keep doing it. I rebel. Me too. I'm going to over... Those people. Let's, oh, it must be... It must, are the law students graduating? Emily, Emily let's overthrow the planet. What, the whole planet? Why? With love. Oh, all right. Okay. Sure thing. All right. It was teacher appreciation week this week. Oh, that's so boring. Well, I can't even talk about that. Teacher, I can't even think about talking about that. <laughs> we had to go make a teacher that's appreciation like a Hallmark, luncheon. Hallmark card kind of a thing. I know. When did that happen? I don't remember. I mean, I think hug a teacher today is fine. I think there's laws cool. that you can't hug teachers anymore or something. Well, off hours you can if you know some. Right. True. Just go hug some. True. Did you know that Swiss Army knives are made out of Swedish steel. Did you know that? No, but they are cool. Well, I so I ordered what I thought was a pruning saw to get, you know, I'm so excited. I always buy like one or two new tools at the beginning of gardening season. So yeah. I, I looked in the catalog. I saw this really cool, what I thought was a pruning saw, and it had the Swiss Army logo on it. Ooh. So I ordered it. It comes, it's like five inches. Is it really heavy? No, it's like this big. What? It's five inches. It's a pruning. Um, it's like a grafting knife. Oh, it's maybe a, it's for little tiny bonsai. It's for grafting. No, it's for grafting. It's a pruning knife, not a pruning saw. So I was a little misled, but now it's such a pretty little thing. It's, I had you know, it I, sounds tiny. I saw. I'm seeing. Like I'm enchanted. Big. It is. You'd like it. It's like it's like a dollhouse. It's a new twist on a Swiss Army knife. A dollhouse. So it's practical for knife. certain people. Yes, and so I had to look up, of course, Swiss Army knife and you see some pocket. things about it. Yeah. Well, it, you know how it says Victoria Knox on it. Yeah. It's for Queen Victoria. It's a mashup. Oh, of I thought Queen... it was like a mountain. No, it's Queen Victoria, and the Inox is a term for stainless steel. So. Well, why do they need knives in Switzerland for the army if they don't fight in wars? I just don't understand. Yeah, I love them. It's just for can't... it's just for protection. Yeah, but well, the company they it was started... will defend. They just don't attack. And okay. I think that's and fabulous. I, policy. I don't know. I don't know when they decided to do that. But this, I wish our army would do that. This, the Swiss army knives. Were... We can defend till we turn blue. That would be great. 
with Swiss Army knives? No, I don't. I don't care what the they company used to was defend. started. I just have to tell you this because I think okay. it's fascinating yeah. that this company is that is it was started in 1894, and they yeah, supp- and they did time. supply knives for the Swiss Army. That's cool. Why don't we take away all the used, guns? They used them for everything. That's why they have a fork and a spoon. If we take away mm-hmm. all the guns and just have Swiss Army knives. Well, think, I, think I, about it for a minute. Stop and think about it. Let that sink in. I don't sink want in. animals being killed with Swiss Army knives, though. No, but you could, there'd be a rule that you can't kill something with it. You can prune with it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think that... You're on to something there, but I'm probably, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I know. I have so many tech solutions, you know, <laughs> like I wish I'd had earplugs last night. That's an easy tech solution that saves a lot of hearing loss. So I, so I was at this, this loud event at Club Met. It was the fundraiser for our next governor, James Ellers. Oh, right, right, right. right. Okay. So, but there was one band, there was three bands. He seems nice. He he's really nice. I like that guy. Um, I think John is running for a rep. Won't that be weird? I think that's great. He hasn't 100% well, officially decided yet or announced Let's all it. go out and have a have a dinner. But he is a political science major, and that was before he got lured away by movie making. That was his career. I, I'm all for it. I'm behind. Choice. I would support his candidacy. You're not in our town. You can't. I, I mean, you can support it, but uh, I don't yeah. think you get to vote for it. No. All right, but I can help. Yeah. I can, we'll, we'll probably need I you. can give him some audio support. That would be cool. Yeah, so this band was so loud. One yeah. of the three bands was so loud. You can stuff um, toilet paper in your I ears. I just didn't want toilet paper sticking out of my ears. This was like, I'm, really I'm, rarely, I'm rarely seen in public, and the last thing I want is to have toilet paper sticking out of my ears in public. But your hair is always in front of your ears. No, it would show. Right. It would show. So I just, I had to, I went downstairs to eat french fries while this band was playing. Oh, that was smart. And I could hear them fine downstairs. Yeah. I mean, that was probably the best place to listen to them. <gasps> that was a good... They were good. It was a good, a good band. Solution. It was just like the bass was coming up my body into my throat. The bass subwoofer vibration. Yeah. That's see, disconcerting I, to me. I'm sorry. Oh, see, I like that feeling, but only when I want that feeling. Yeah. Um, we have a couple minutes here left. Already? Yeah, we have like a couple minutes. What do you want to do? Don't Don't squander them. Um... Should we thank our sponsors? Oh, man, I was hoping you wouldn't say that, Sorry. but I guess that's the right thing to do, you know, ethically, morally. Yeah. Um, Todd, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Todd times Tunbridge five. Grease Collective, Mountain Folk, Howvale Farms. <laughs> what are the two new ones? The Grilled Cheese Place. No, you're not supposed to. You said you were going to say it. Five Old oh, Tavern and Grill. I love our sponsors. Thanks Don't get me lot. wrong. And what's the last one? Oh, it's Todd again. It's Todd's Painting Company, which is what? Is it Green Mountain Painting? Look, let's do this next week when we're if more informed. If you need someone to paint, you just call Todd. We, need to do we don't our know homework. what his name of his actual painting business is because the man has so many businesses. I don't know how he keeps the names of his businesses straight, but they're all good. So we don't have to worry. We don't care what it's called. Yeah, and if somebody needs to find out like who Todd is, if you don't know Todd, just call us, and he can come. No, paint. don't call us. Why? Text us. Yeah. Okay, message us. Right. We don't answer the phone. Exactly. Unless we have to. <laughs> I had to this week. It was painful, but I, had I did to it a couple of times too. Yeah, I got through it. Okay, so. We had fun today. We did with everybody. It's a group experience. It's a group gestalt. Gestalt. Is that a word? Did you? I, well, you are all about making up words today, so yeah. So. Sign with me. Okay. So we have one track of music to go out on called "Tears of Joy" by Gold Town, which is a band from the Manchester area. Nice. And uh, we'll we see. Hope you. you guys have a fabulous weekend. Catch us again next Friday. Yeah. See you next week. <laughs>
lost a lot of rain, cold as a desert dawn. Those tears of joy say I suppose so. It's slow while you got a throne. Can't hide your shame across the border, road country lines. When you're singing yourself in that bozo, lots a lot of rain, cold as a desert dawn. Tears of joy say I suppose so Say I suppose